Are you going to stay way over there? Or are you going to come and keep Mama company? Okay, y'all, it's Steph here from Southern Sky TN Garden. And I will turn the camera around in a minute. But I'm seeing if Cash is going to follow me over to the garden. Yeah. Sweet boy. Here he comes. Here comes the boy. Good boy. Okay, well, you know, he went back inside after all that. I guess it's a little warm for him today. So I'm out here in the main garden today, and I'm just going to harvest some last few Kentucky Wonder pole beans I had growing, and they've coming to it they're coming to an end so i'm just going to out here harvest a few of them and add them to some very interesting beans that i have a surprise for you all i want to share so i'm just doing this special video and it's also giving credit to a friend of mine a girlfriend of mine had given me some beans from her garden that she has grown year after year and is from a long time variety of beans from her family so i'll share a little bit more about those when i go inside but right now we're going to harvest some of these uh, kentucky wonder beans that i have out here and see what i have going and can add to my um blanching of the beans anyway sorry that's the purpose of this video we're going to be blanching some green beans so i can put them in the freezer and have them when we want them so along with her beans which i've got a whole big bag of i'm gathering up what few i have out here as i deconstructed the bean stalks i had going out here which i'll post in another video just a short little garden cleanup i was doing so, after all that, Cash did decide to join me out here. He's um, over by a cucumber that I've got to harvest over there. And as you can see on the fence, there's a cucumber laying there. My husband had handed it to me, and it was growing from the cucumbers that are on the other side over there. But I have a fairly large one growing down there that I'll pan around to after we finish with the beans. Hi, Cash. Cashy. Hi, baby. Okay, y'all. I'm just checking to make sure I'm recording because the sun is right in my eyes. But I am over here by the bean plants. And I just have gathered up a few of them. Again, like I said, I was doing Kentucky Wonderful beans and then some Burgundy Bush beans. And I found some over in here. And then, funny fact is because, again, I was doing like a whole cleanup of the bush the bean plants taking them down because they were quite large and growing all over the place which is why I want to put up a trellis for next year but as they were dying down my husband comes in and he goes I just put down a bunch of beans for you I'm like oh honey really I'm like okay well you know they're gonna die on the frost when it comes later this month and that's expected to be about the early 20s of October, about like the 21st or 22nd this year. Last year it was the 31st, but I am still going to see if we can salvage some beans because I do have my hoops up and maybe I won't lose them in the frost if I put my, my cover cloth over the hoops and try to cover them. Maybe we can have some that will survive that first killing frost because then what happens it's so disappointing that we get this crazy first killing frost and then the days after that it goes up to like 70 degrees again so it's so disappointing but I'm gonna see what I can do to cover some of these because they're growing amazingly but I just was picking down some more I picking out some uh, more burgundy bush beans here and y'all I had an incredible bean season this year. I couldn't even harvest and get everything that was growing. Uh, a lot of it I gave to my father, as you saw in some couple videos, and I had so many go to seed. So I'll also show you a shot of that where I have a whole containers of Kentucky Wonder Beans. I do not need to buy any more bean seeds for quite a while. Because as you know, if I continue to use those and plant them out in the yard, just like we we're seeing, they are very prolific and they will grow even more 
stronger and more vibrant in the seasons to come because now they're used to our environment, they're used to my soil. So that will be a blessing for years to come here. And oh, I got a few more here. Yeah, these burgundy bush beans were so fun to grow and they put out such a pretty purple flower. They're so pretty. And the Kentucky Wonders, it's not a really incredible plant. It does put out a nice white flower so you know things are coming on, but not as this pretty, you won't be able to see it, but it's a really pretty little purple bell-shaped flower that the burgundy bush beans put out. All right, I think I've gathered everything because I knew I saw some down here and I think I already got those that I saw. Okay, so I'm still letting these happen because there's still the little white flowers coming on. Like I said, I'm going to try and cover things so that maybe I don't lose everything or still try to get some beans off of the new ones that were planted. My husband's like, I thought they were like peas. They'll grow in the winter. I'm like, no, that was the first couple of years we were out here gardening and I didn't know that. I'm like, why can't I ever grow peas? And it's because I was planting them in the heat of the summer. So this year I've got to get my pea plants in the or my pea seeds in the ground and I shared several past videos where I had amazing success with peas so going to get those in the ground along with some other um, seeds you can see here all where cash is at and this bed over here all these bean plants that are growing now so we're going to see if we can salvage some of those and do some more harvesting and i got to pull out a lot of this zucchini that's going on out here get those last ones in and oh yeah well i'm going to lay this down here and then we'll grab it when we head into the house but i'm going to head over here see like i've got a lot of tomatoes that are still coming on i'm just gonna pick this one for a snack mm, so good so good but a lot of ones that are drying out here because i haven't been harvesting them i have been actually but i just can't harvest as many as i'm growing so anyway along with this cucumber out here i think i might have misspoke and said zucchini but i meant cucumber if i misspoke there but i've got a big one down here that i'll see if i can twist off or if i can't since i've got Tripod right here. Oh, it just kind of fell off. Well, there you go. That is one great cucumber. That is awesome. I've got another one back in there too. So I'll have to get to that one later and then harvest a bunch more of these tomatoes and uh, can up some salsa. All right, y'all. So we're going to head inside and I will show you those beans. Cash, you're such a good boy. If I'm behind the camera and what he's staring at right now is these cucumbers in my hand. <laughs> You gonna come inside with mama or just relax out here? All right, we're gonna go inside. So much growing, y'all. So much to harvest still. All right, we will head inside. Okay, y'all, we are back in the kitchen and it was quite warm out there, so it's nice to be back inside but I still got work to do outside after we're done. But I wanna share the beans with you that my friend gave me. So she is Lei Ocean and the family is from Laos and her grandmother started growing these beans back when she was just a kid. Um, they came out to her and her family immigrated to the United States when she was five years old and have been living out here in Middle Tennessee ever since. So the beans that she gave me, we call them by her name, her friendship beans, because she says I've gained so many friends through having these beans and growing them, I give them away. So I just wanna share with you like how long they are. This is some of these beans right here. These were the longest in the bag that I gathered up from her. And I can't get the whole tape measure on there. But they are almost about, they're, this variety right here, is, these back right here is between like 25 and 29 inches. So, yep. And if you go to the Baker Creek rear seed catalog, you can see beans that are very similar to this too. 
unless you direct message me and you want to reach out to my friend and get beans from her. <laughs> so these are the beans. And it's funny because she has two different uh, bunches of them growing over two different trellises. And one was producing like a darker purple bean. And then the other is like a brown bean. And so the beans are funny because they're a lot like the Kentucky Wonder and Burgundy Bush beans, which Burgundy Bush beans are also this light brown bean. And Burgundy Bush beans are this, like this purpley red bean that you get. So very interesting, but she's growing her two uh, trellises of beans. And she'll just say like one is maybe, maybe because one is getting a different um, setting of the sun, you know, a little bit on that trellis, but she felt like some of them were a little bit darker green than the other ones on the trellis, on the other trellis. But anyway, it is a really fabulous bean. And I will tell you that I had already blanched some and froze them and they are delicious. And I actually should have done these like a week ago, but we're doing them now <laughs> before it's too late because I am not letting these go to waste. So what I was doing right now was just cutting off some of the ends because most of the beans, they grow like, uh, like two will grow on each one. A lot like the Kentucky Wonder and the other Burgundy Bush beans, you know, they kind of tend to grow a couple per little string, per little branch that they get. So most of these grew like two beans. So I'm cutting off this end before I blanch them. And then even if there's this, the other end is fine. It doesn't put out like a string like the Kentucky uh, Wonder Beans do, which I want to cut off. I could save time and just cut them off when I go to cook them later, but I was trying to cut them off now when I'm blanching them. But anyway, so I can kind of leave the ends alone, but I am cutting this tip off of the beans that she gave me. And like I said, I thought it was so cute because we were over there and we're like, insert my friend's name. I'm gonna call them the friendship beans. So it was really cute, but so nice and so generous, generous of her to give me all these beans and they are delicious. So I'm gonna finish trimming these up. Oh, these are the ones that we brought in from outside. And I have a few more around here. I have to find them. <laughs> I'm looking around because I'm like, did I put them over there? Or maybe they're already in, no, they're not in my colander. All right, but I do have a few more of these floating around here somewhere that I had harvested earlier. So I'm gonna grab those and blanch those also. But I do have my boiling water going right over here and um, they'll go in there. And I'm gonna cut them up into like a couple inch sections while I show you. And then, oh, I also wanted to share with you. These are actually drying out in the garage, but these are some of the beans that I took from her that were really large and they were already at the time green, but on their way to uh, going to, you know, going to drier seed. So I've hung these in my garage on a hanger so that I can even preserve more beans. And then I'll start my own variety of my friend's friendship beans. <laughs> so very fun. But like I said, if you go to Baker Creek, there's a variety called um, Taiwan long green beans, or again, direct message me and I will send you some beans from my friend or send you her contact information because I know she would love to share some with you if she still has them going because we're all in the midst of deconstructing our bean plants, but I'm sure she still has a bunch going. I might even contact her this week and say, can I get a few more? <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna, gonna finish prepping these and show you how I'm cutting them and follow up with you. Okay, y'all, we are gonna cut these beans now. I'm gonna do them in about two inch lengths. So, I'm gonna throw them in the colander. I've already got the beans that were mine in the colander, ready to get rinsed off. So, these are all sliced up here. And get them going. so generous to give me so many of them. That's why I said I can't wait to request if I can get some more. And then I cannot wait to grow them myself next year. I have to tell you that the plant is beautiful. The early plants are beautiful that they grow on. And just what an amazing trellis she has going with them. So, I'm just going to get 
is all sliced up. And grab some multiples here and speed up this process. Doesn't need to be perfect, right, y'all? is practice for me, not perfection. And the process, definitely, over perfection. <laughs> That's why I garden. Never afraid to try new things, new, new plants, always looking forward to trying new things. A couple little seeds popping out here. We will just concentrate right now and get the rest of these chopped up. I also have my ice bath set up over there to going. All right. So we are just going to put these in without burning myself. <laughs> oh, y'all. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Oh, my goodness. So delicious. Now going to come around and give this a couple tablespoons of salt, which is always optional for anybody, but they turned out really delicious when I salted the first batch she gave me. And, oh, just they were amazing. All right, we're going to set the timer here. Oops, turn on the light. Going to set the timer here and let these blanch for about oh, five minutes. Okay, I can only set it for six, but hey, there you go. <laughs> We're ready to rock and roll here. Get some down in here. Because I'm not a professional blancher, you all. I've just started, you know, preserving a lot of what I grow and trying to make it last season after season. So I'm not going to be a perfectionist on here about the blanching, but they are better blanching them at least, even if you get them in the hot water, which I'm going to do, like I said, for five minutes. They are much better than if you just freeze them straight. And I actually did that last year because I saved beans, but I wasn't really, you know, educated on the part about blanching them first. So I don't actually know if the ones I froze from last year are really even edible or not. I don't know. Because now that I listen to all these different podcasts and different YouTubers also that I watch and learn from, everybody says you really should blanch your beans and blanch a lot of vegetables before you freeze them because they, it, it takes away, it releases like the enzymes in them and takes away the rubberiness of the vegetable texture. So that's why we're blanching them now. So hopefully they do good here. Okay, so we're gonna let these go for five minutes and get back with you on the water bath canning portion. I'm gonna show how beautiful they look though. 
No, look at that. Oh, and they turned this nice, rich green color in the water. So good. So good. Okay, y'all, so I'm down to about 30 seconds on the uh, blanching. And actually, I had set the timer <laughs> for five minutes. It was like, it was like 4.59. It was like something weird, but anyway. But I had set it for five minutes. And in the meantime, I just did a little Siri Google double check to make sure that I was good for five minutes. And it said, yeah, the, the proper time to blanch vegetables is between three and five minutes, I think depending on the amount that you're blanching. And also because these really, I should have blanched them like a week ago. They've been in the fridge, in the drawer, in the bag. So I should have blanched them then and they would have been even more tender, but letting them go right now to that full five minutes, even a little five, 0.3 seconds, 5.3 minutes. <laughs> so I'm gonna let them go a little bit because like I said, they weren't as tender as I would have liked them to be. So they should be fine now. But I'm gonna go around and get the pot off the stove and come back to y'all. All right. Pretty much just set them right down on the granite countertop. And I've got a, uh, a little uh, colander here to kind of help me dish them out. And I'll come around this side. Let get them dished out just so it doesn't splash me so much. Clean them in. Oh, whoops, I turned off the timer. Okay. Here. And then the reason you want to do that ice bath is because you immediately stop the cooking process so they don't overcook. You don't want to freeze them fully cooked. Just enough so that when you go to actually cook them, they will not be, um, you know, Fully, fully done at that point. You still feel like you have some really super good fresh green beans. All right, I'm gonna get the rest, get the rest of these out of here. Last few remaining beans. Y'all make sure you turn that pot away from you because that is some hot steam. All right. And a little, a little bean seed fallout. <laughs> okay, that is all going in the ice bath. All right. Okay. So we're going to let those sit for a few minutes and then I'm going to drain them again. Let them cool off. Get my big colander again. Drain them out. And then we'll be ready to bag them up. And I have bags over here, already labeled beans from Garden of 24, and get them ready to go. And then in the meantime, I will also show you, I have so much more too, but this is all the Kentucky Wonder beans I have going, so that I shelled already. I let them dry out and shell them. And then I have a whole nother bowl too. So that's why I said I have beans for a long, long time now. <laughs> but the um, other use you can do with them is also just, besides just you know using these to plant again, of course, I'm gonna use them and boil them and make them into some soups that we do. So there you go. I also have a lot of beans for that purpose too. And I also want to grow different varieties of beans. Oh, excuse me, y'all. I got a, a taste of a bean in between there. I'm going to have the camera off. But um, what was I saying? But uh, yeah, so, you know, many other uses that you can do with the beans. And then I also want to try other varieties and grow other varieties of beans so I can have different ones. So, okay, I think this is good. Oh, y'all, the taste test. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
delicious. Oh my God, they cook up so good. I cannot tell you how good they are. I mean, for a bean, it is delicious. Oh, that's what I told my friend. I was like, oh my God, I have to get as many as possible. I mean, they are so good, y'all. Mm. Mm -hmm. So good. Okay, let's get these drained. Oh my God, they cook up amazing. And I'm really happy because I really thought like, oh God, I'm gonna lose them if I don't, uh, you know, blanch and water bath them soon and get them in the freezer. But they cook up such a gorgeous, gorgeous green color and they were nice and soft and tender. So there you go. For the win, y'all, for the win. All right. So now I have my bags here and I am just going to be bagging them up and putting them in the freezer. And I hope you all enjoyed this video and we'll tune into some other videos that I do and please subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you can see when I do other videos. And again, I would be grateful if you all would subscribe to my channel. I so enjoy doing this. And as I've shared before, and I always share, I have done this more for the community that I can be a part of out there in the gardening YouTube channel so that I can get feedback as a new gardener. I've been doing this for about four years now, but I still feel so new and there's so many different things that I haven't tried yet and I'm just venturing into, such as preserving and then growing other varieties of vegetables that I haven't tried before. And I'm gonna go out after I'm done here and work on getting some fall seedlings going. I'm a little late on the game, but I have um, garlic that I bought with my friend who gave me the beans. And those are uh, getting, um, I can't think of the term now, but where you wanna refrigerate certain vegetables especially root vegetables before you plant them in the ground. So that garlic is getting stratified. I think it's cold stratification. Yes, yeah, so it is much better if you get the garlic in the refrigerator before you plant it up to about like seven to 10 days. So I have that going right now. But anyway, okay y'all, so I have lots to do today. After this, it's back to gardening. <laughs> So have a wonderful day, you all, and keep growing. And again, please subscribe and follow me and sign up for notifications.